by Michael Richardson and Yuichi Nakaguro. Um, and um, since we already, I think we have a very cool transition here because we already uh, um, heard a bit about Rust and, and, and Python um, usages for Riot in this talk, and um, how we will meet these two uh, languages again in, in the final talk by, by Michael and UET. Hi, is my slides, are my slides displayed? Yep. Yeah, okay, good. So um, I'm Michael, uh, I live in Canada, and uh, there's a picture of me in the left, and uh, Jay uh, is a, a Japanese uh, hacker who seems to have settled in Thailand, and uh, we've been working together for a few months on, uh, on this. Um, and uh, a lot of our goal is about ESP32, um, and there's some free RTOS stuff discussion in here so as well so you know you can all plug your ears or something like that when that part comes up okay so what what overview of this talk we're talking about the goals of this project uh we call it belgrade because i uh name most of my projects with the code names off in their cities um and uh a little bit about what we're doing and why and the technologies involved and who we're trying to reach um and some of the challenges there um, we're not really going to do a demo in the sense of actually running code, but rather we have a bunch of slides with some captures that Jay is going to walk through at the end of that. Jay, did you want to maybe unmute, make sure that you can actually, sure. we can hear you? Yeah, yeah. okay, good. All right. All right. So the goal of this project is get some secure onboarding. And by this, I mean things like Brewski into uh, Riot OS and free R RTOS um, and those who know me well have been I've been involved in this in this uh, kind of stuff for a number of years ago. We have a bunch of RFCs that came out. 8366 is one of them. 8995 is another one that came out in the spring. Um, and uh, we want to kind of integrate this all together with MicroPython. And this, you know, Cohen said some interesting things, and I thought that was really nice. But I actually view this as as kind of the opposite uh, view. The MicroPython is because the, the user is like our first speaker, Ionis, um, maybe not even really particularly network clueful. Um, and therefore they're going to be writing in a language that um, is uh, reaching up to uh, deal with, with them. Maybe they are, yes, architects or something else like this, um, but they need to do some things. And so our goal is really to provide them with um, some components that they can link to. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. And the other thing that I want you to kind of uh, take on this is the concept that the next killer IoT app is probably not going to be written by one of us. It's not going to be written by somebody who has a clue about, <laughs> about electronics and IoT. And to, to, to emphasize this point, I will say that the NAPS, the guys that invented NAPS for 20 years ago, they didn't even know about network byte order. And yet they completely revolutionized the music industry. And so... The issue is, imagine if they had a higher level tool and there were like all sorts of exploits in their code because they wrote it in C++. And imagine if they had written it in Rust or Haskell or something like that instead, um, the world would, would be a little bit different in, uh, that way. So uh, I talked a bit about the technologies. We're writing as many of our libraries in Rust as we can. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that we want the memory safety. We think it's the future. And also because I want to be able to reuse it in places that is not uh, just uh, Ride OS. We're targeting the ESP32. Um, in the upper right here is a picture of this Adafruit featherweight uh, uh, device. Um, it has all sorts of pluggable sensors. It's a kind of a Lego thing. Um, they ship it with free RTOS and MicroPython, and that's that's how they do it. It's basically the end user gets that, and that's the environment they're kind of uh, 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 given. Um, and uh, they're not really encouraged to necessarily recompile a free RTOS in the beginning. Um, and just to give you some specs on the, the ESP32, if you're not that familiar, it's not a class zero. It's got 512K of RAM and four megabytes of flash. Okay, so it's pretty rich um, and it comes with Wi-Fi um, and apparently it does okay in the uh, in the power consumption space, but it's it's not an NF, uh, uh, NPF. Uh, device um, and, uh, for sure. Free RTOS, well, because that's what it's coming with. And so the kind of the environment that I'm in, in, in my, imagining is that, well, 
they start there and they start seeing our code there, but it's probably not terribly functional. Um, and, uh, uh, but at some point they say, oh, okay, wait a minute, I need something better. And they see that there's a transition to Ride OS and they simply essentially move their Python code from one place to the other and then life is better for them. So uh, there's a it's, a, it's a totally intended as a bait and switch. Okay, so um, this is also a little bit about the uh, need to have a, a hello world application that comes with uh, batteries included security and the onboarding should be included. Um, and I want it to be upstreamed uh, everywhere. So I kind of want to make this as easy as possible to get it there, such that when that garage small enterprise IoT experimenter does a proof of concept, um, that we have actually some good security bootstrapping there already. Because the reality is that as much as they think, oh, we'll redo it later on to add security, that never happens. It ships. And we know this is the case. And so the goal is to get this in there first. Um, and from my point of view, um, you know, if they start selling a million products, they're probably going to want some support. Um, and uh, that would be my goal to be sent, sell them that kind of stuff, uh, provisioning systems, onboarding systems. Um, and if they don't like mine, well, they're all open standard. And so they could roll their own if they want. Uh, and, you know, they don't have to be locked in. So it's a little bit different than Amazon, Intel, uh, some of other stuff like this that where they they're basically they're going to lock you into their commissioning system so what does it look like the goal is that MicroPython sits as a top it pulls together a bunch of different things together um and makes it happen okay um and then we would provide a reference python code that is in the order of um i have hasn't been written yet but it's going to be in the order of of 50 to 60 lines of code that basically says call this function call this function get this object back shove it down this pipe do something else um, you may know, I'll mention that, that, that GNRC uh, connectivity up to MicroPython is currently not, not connected. So that is actually one of our challenges. And we're going to uh, offer some of the other onboarding mechanisms, so, such as, for instance, the soft AP mechanism that is present in free RTOS already. Um, and call home if you've got a wire, you can do that easily. So ESP32 challenges. Um, so one of them is that I need to get, we need to get a, an IDEV ID into the device. We want to have a, a certificate and a private key. Um, and uh, some of the conversations about some of the things we discussed um, uh, this week, uh, like the uh, Riot boot, for instance, um, would be very nice to, to kind of standardize that in my mind um, so that we can say, oh, well, it's always, always available and it's always at this maybe address or block or something like this and, and uh, some things. And so I have some proposals about on ESP32 specifically about structuring, the restructuring the firmware a little bit and hoping to upstream that. Uh, there is in factory a bunch of stuff for doing provisioning of keys. Um, I don't have any details. Some of it's under NDA, but the goal is to be compatible with that stuff. So that if someone does get to the point of stamping out a million devices that this is gonna be there. Um, I even thinking the question, you know, uh, the first firmware that you load, maybe it always comes with that trust anchor. It is, in fact, uh, a rise of the suit manifest and things like that, and that gets provisioned in there. Um, and Extensa has some secure to measure boot mechanisms, which I'd like to exploit for that. So the project status is we have the, our Rust voucher library is about 90% done. We've done, uh, we front-ended loaded almost all the integration to free RTOS and Riot OS. So in a sense, we're shipping code that doesn't do anything at this point, um, but we're still shipping the code. Um, and so we've we've adapted a whole bunch of libraries that we needed. We've made them no STD. Jay did a, almost all that work and we'll let him talk about that in the next slide or two. Um, and we're now, we, we've we been trying to use QMU Extensa, uh, but we're also now using native as well. The bad, so MicroPython's not connected to GNRC. and I don't know how complicated that's going to be at this point. I hope it's not too hard um, there. Um, and as we had a conversation earlier this morning, we're really doing this by using Cargo to build a library and then linking that into Riot OS. And I'm not happy about that as a general process, but I feel very pragmatically that this is better than not doing, waiting for something that's uh, ideal. So when that thing comes along, then I'm I'm all for it, okay? Um, so talked a little bit, no SCD. 
Um, so we realized that was like too small. We needed a little bit more. And so we have something that we call, you know, informally semi STD. And so we have a little bit of uh, memory allocation and uh, we have a crate called MCUIF and it lets us do some things and uh, there. And we, as I said, we build a library and we link from there. Um, and this is just a little bit of an overview of the comparisons of the, what happens on the two sides of things. Um, and uh, we have different networking and uh, the ESP bin, how big it is, it's free RTOS is bigger. It's interesting to know that. Um, and we were basically, we will standardize on embed TLS. Um, it's, it has enough stuff to make us happy. Uh, and it's not too big given that we have a four gig uh, for a meg of flash for that. Um, we are doing work on the on native as well. And I'm going to explain that why some of that was pushed to us. Um, and I don't want to take up too much time with this slide. It's kind of just a good, good kind of comparison of, of where we are. Um, Jay, I'm going to turn this over to you. But I but before I go, I want to just say add the thing that one of the problems we had on can't remember where it is in the slides, is that uh, so the uh, when we put our our code on a real ESP, of course, it's got Wi-Fi and that works. Um, when we run it under the emulator, it hasn't got Wi-Fi, so it doesn't work, but it does have Ethernet uh, simulated or emulated. Unfortunately, the emu Ethernet emulation is poor and we can't really use it. So we actually wind up with a choice of of running on a real board, uh, you know, one of these uh, with Wi-Fi, which is really kind of difficult in the sense of so many radio and issues that, uh, you know, confuse the testing or running under an emulator and having no networking. And since the goal is to have networking, we, we were like kind of find ourselves between a rock and a hard plate, uh, place. And so that's why we've kind of turned to the native uh, space. So Jay, take it away. Tell me when to advance the slide. Yes. Uh, from now, I'm going to explain the reference implementation that realized the uh, grand vision that Michael explained. So uh, the name is IoT Rust Module Studio, and uh, this is now up in GitHub and uh, completely open source. And uh, most of the things written in Rust, except for make files and uh, some scripts. And uh, it uh, consists of uh, two helper uh, crates. One is called MCU EMU and the other is MCU IM. MCU IM can launch a, a runner for ESP32 uh, extensor QM and also Riot's native binary. And uh, MCU IF is an interface to on top of no STD thing. So we put some nice things uh, from uh, STD. Uh, great and uh, implement there and uh, we will explain uh, shortly so in this demo particularly there are three examples number one is esp32 no std which is uh, only for esp32 not uh, native for riot but it's pure um, no std context so you will see what is the minimal uh, binary uh, for targeting for ESP32 using Rust. And the second example is a cross board base, which is, which supports ESP32 and uh, Riot native. And the, the and the using, this uses the MCU if, so it can do fancy things uh, close to STD libraries in Rust. And the third thing, the last one is uh, on top of the base, uh, example, we constructed the MicroPython demo. So we will show you uh, next. Okay, so in this repository, uh, there is a big fat make file uh, here on the top, at the top, and uh, using just uh, one command line, make init, will solve many things. Number one, make init Rust extensor, and number two, uh, ESP IDF setup. Number three, Riot extensor setup, and number four, QM extensor, and the number number five is the 
setting up a nightly Rust uh, x86 uh, toolchain. And the last is the 64-bit uh, uh, x86 uh, nightly, nightly uh, toolchain for debugging. OK, so this is just one line and three minutes, and it's all set. So you don't have to do all this, uh, especially the ex extensor setup stuff. Uh, it takes time, a week, a few weeks uh, for us, but you can do it in three minutes and uh, one line. Okay, next, please. So the first example, the simplest one is ESP32, no STD. So look at the left bottom uh, directory structure. So this directory is just uh, constitutes a one library traits. And uh, the content is a star number one. Uh, it's, it's a Rust library, static library named Rust mod. And this is, uh, come, this comes with the source code librs, which is uh, number three star. Uh, and uh, this just uh, implements a simple square function in Rust callable from C space, okay? So this, when if you compile this using cargo, cargo, you will get number two star, lib with Rust mod A, okay? And link it to Riot's make file. Then the final main function of the Riot source code, we call square there and we get the Right answer, hopefully. Input is four. What is output? Next. You? Okay. So to run to run this uh, binary, I run and to build and run this binary, we can invoke a make command already set up. So if you, first you call make command, then uh, on the top we will launch a Riot builder, and we get the final binary. Riot ESP32 bin uh, with size 89 kilobyte. And then after that, we call make run, then MCU im create, MCU im create will launch a ES extensor QM runner. And this is a result. Boom. We get answer 16 from the Rust function square. So it works. So this is a minimal case. And on top of this, we are going to extend extend this uh, with more useful things to accommodate real life create dependency and so on. So let's go to the next example. XBD base, and this has a structure similar to the previous example, and but the difference is it will make use of our utility create MCU if MCU interface, and this will implement some missing feature from uh, no, uh, in no STD context. One is panic handler, and also the other is a uh, global allocator and uh, error book print debugging function and memory uh, I/O functionality. So we have a similar cargo.tom file, and uh, the difference is dependency section. So as you see, it's loading the MCU if uh, great. And then the source code becomes uh, number three, star. We can just safely, uh, we can comfortably include print room and also box which is used for heap, allocating heap, and most important maybe, VEC. In the, in the normal no SCD context, VEC, even VEC is not available because it's a dynamic container and it needs allocation. But this interface create will resolve, set up all the things for using VEC. And the lastly is the IO, yes. Uh, utilities like cursor, and you, you can use seek on the right uh, structs. And then the demo 
core sample is number four. You can see uh, we are using box and the back and uh, even back macro calls. And then it's, we expect that running this should give, give us what we want. Let's see. Okay, we run using the make command, but in this case, uh, compared to the previous one, we have two uh, binary output support. One is Riot native, and the other is ESP32 binary. So in this case, we call make build native. So we get Riot native output. And this is used for, useful for debugging. And when we run this, exactly uh, the output number three star is what we want. So basically, using this example, you you can you can treat this as a template, and you can start implementing your own Rust libraries. And uh, yes, just roll it in the Riot. Next, please. Yes. So previous one is the native, but of course we support ESP32 uh, emulator debugging. And the usage is similar, make build ESP32 for building. And uh, you can see the size and the binary output. And then you can run it on the QM extensor. And the output is correct and exactly the same as the previous case. So this is, uh, in this ESP32 context, it's more close to the real device. So the output should be more reliable to the production quality you want. And then, the, and also important thing is this binary can be used for the real device if you flash it, okay? So this is our kind, kind of debug cycle. Let's go to the next final example. So on top of this base project, we became ambitious and try to launch MicroPython uh, from our firmware. And, and the directory structure is a bit uh, now uh, complicated, but basically we have a MicroPython integration part. And the other one is uh, since we are calling the um, Python library, in, in this case, a uh, voucher. Then we have uh, details of uh, this voucher library here. I will tell you next slide, but for this slide, we will just follow the flow of the build arti artifacts. So first, librs is uh, compiled into libvoucher.a, static library. And this static library is included linked into the Riot application side. And this library function can be called from the Riot MicroPython module source code. So it's a number three. And finally, in MicroPython, after launching MicroPython, we use this module. And I will show you next slide exactly. Okay, so you show, before showing the, the output, we, will, we have to, first discuss the details of MicroPython integration. In this case, and there is a upstream MicroPython repository. Uh, we expect that ports Riot is there, but actually it's not there yet. And the upstream for port Riot is currently, as far as we know, at Casper's uh, fork. And so we took this and uh, try to first bump the compatible MicroPython version to the latest 1.16. And also, since we are both targeting ESP32 and native for debugging, so we make it make the build script multi-architecture and especially test it on ESP32 and it works. The original version is uh, for native build, but uh, this is our modification. So 
uh, I would like to uh, discuss uh, how to push uh, these modifications and, and try to get both riot existent in MicroPython official. And the bottom part, uh, we have uh, some challenges, especially a riot generic network. We have to get it working with MicroPython, and that is not yet. But to do that, we have a very strong uh, support from the riot native board, native board. So we find that debug is much uh, easier than sticking into the QM extensor. So there's a hope, a lot of hope here. Next, please. Voucher library integration. So now we, I'm showing a lot of Rust RS files uh, depicting the details of this library. So basically, we are implementing RFC A366 um, voucher library and under the supervision of Michael. And uh, this one, we use codes and CBO decoder. So we had to somehow make it work with uh, Riot OS. And, and uh, I implement, we implemented in Rust using some uh, base and uh, great support. And uh, also uh, there is a validation functionality needed. For that part, we use ECDSA from MFTS library. So for this part, it's kind of a bit uh, FFI stuff is going on. And uh, when we build this uh, crate uh, as a one static uh, library crate, uh, we have some dependencies, but basically we try to minimize the number of dependencies and but maintain the MCU if creates uh, utility features to to support like Mozilla Mozilla Cibo or cause also used to be developed in the Mozilla group and they are heavily using vector of course and also that io features from the spd io uh, packages so we have to manage uh, those things missing things in your spd and good is working Next, please so finally we can run uh run this uh example and the uh, main c is the starting point and then this main c will load boot pi and in this boot pi i we put some tests uh, simple python based test uh, test implementation i mean a tester a python based tester only 10 lines of code and then do a bunch of basic checks and also coding the voucher library and uh, check the integrity of the output. And after boot pi, just uh, follow the test procedure. We go into the repo, and there we can exactly type uh, what we want to check, and debug will happen as in the screenshot. And finally, uh, maybe this is the highlight. Uh, so we have we are using calls, but Yes, those things are properly working in the debug output. And the same, the same uh, code can be built and run in the ESP32 emulator, plus real device also. So this is the, uh, so far uh, the demo uh, we came to. And conclusions. So for me, implementation uh, perspective, uh, I'm, have to work hard on GNRC uh, connectivity uh, networking from Py, MicroPython. And also now MBTS TLS is uh, invaluable to us. And uh, I'm working on the bindings and make it work properly. 
Okay, so with that said, I think the final uh, conclusion here goes to Michael, please. Yeah, I don't, I think I mentioned this and I'd rather take questions. Um, you can read the slide. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, Martin, you had a question? Yeah, maybe rather, rather not a question, but maybe a proposal for the GNSC port of the micro co op uh, and micro Python um, uh, mm -hmm. library. Uh, would it make sense to rather go for SOC directly or like in it is, it is done in Christian's Rust port uh, for GCorp directly because maybe people don't actually want to use the uh, with this, uh, want to interact with the IP layer or the UDP layer directly, but more use something familiar like SOC or or GCorp rather. Um, so uh, what I need is uh, need um, at one level to be able to reach down and set ESS IDs and other things like this uh, from a MicroPython level to become uh, compatible with other things and um, at some point, we'll have to figure find some code that can do a soft AP. So that's that's not answering your question, but I'm saying that there's a, a scale of different kinds of interfaces that we need. So um, it's... I, I'm, but at another level, I would like to be able to do um, um, HTTP TLS over embed TLS over the whole thing, and also yeah, uh, co-app S over over uh, um, embed TLS as well. Um, but I don't really need to send or receive, you know, individual UDP packets and stuff like this. In some sense, um, like uh, um, uh, uh, the speaker yes, yesterday um, said, you know, we, we, it needs to be a higher level than that for most people. Yeah, that's what was, I was thinking. So it's more about option setting, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but maybe then the net if API would be the thing to attack there because there uh, at least are plans to all, also support then other network stacks for option setting at least on the link layer level oh oh at uh, like other kinds of of network interfaces you mean yeah yeah and and i would love to also be able to support co-op over bluetooth yeah it's probably okay. also then uh yeah. I'm not sure how, what the plans for BLE and then the support of the NetF API are, but maybe that's also then possible. Okay. Well, my Thank understanding you. is you don't have IP addresses underneath the co-app or the UDP on Bluetooth, um, but uh, I know Christian knows it much better than me. Um, so including the WebSocket stuff that I know there. Any other questions from anyone else? I know we're at the last, the last slot of the last day I don't want to go over time. Nobody else. I mean, we we are uh, going over to the to the open mic and discussion session anyway. So I um, mean, we can also have the the questions uh, right now. If there are any questions, I, I was just wondering like, about um, you waiting for the embed TLS library port. Um, actually, I'm. I'm surprised that it's not yet there, um, but uh, is there any particular reason to go for embed TLS uh, instead of uh, Wolf SSL, for example? Um, I, I don't. I, I um. I, I actually like them both a lot. Um, uh, my feeling is that in the short term, embed TLS has better support for. Uh, hardware accelerations and better testing on that level. Um, but uh, Wolf SSL is actually also very, very uh, good that way. Um, so I, I don't think it's uh, I, I, I pick one. Be I picked one because uh, I know embed TLS a lot better at this point than I do Wolf SSL. Um, so uh, that's that's where I started that way. Okay. So no more questions. Probably you're right, Michael. People are just like too too tired right now <laughs> after two days of talks. But uh, yeah, very cool work and very nice presentation. Thanks a lot. And um, yeah.
that concludes the the last uh, session with with talks and uh, we